preaching and prayer. Preaching and power. Preaching and the supernatural. Are you expectant? Amen. Let's pray together. Father, in the name of Jesus, we bless your name for your people. We know you love us. And we know you're going to do good in every life. You will enrich every life tonight. We will not remain the same as we came in Jesus' name. Any load, any sin, the devil has punched in any life. This night, we tell the devil, pack your load and go in Jesus' name. Wipe the tears of your people away. Search the captives free. We pray, Lord, this night, nobody will go empty-handed. Total redemption. Total recovery. Complete riches from on high. Grant unto your people in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Praise the Lord. I said praise the Lord. We're looking at Romans chapter 4. Romans chapter 4. You know that this weekend we're talking about enrichment. Enrichment through God's visitation. I'm dealing with enrichment tonight. Tomorrow, by the grace of God, I'll deal with visitation. God is going to visit you. Where are you? I say God will visit you. By the time you leave here tomorrow, you will not even have to open your mouth and talk to anybody. When they see you like this, they know that heaven visited you. That the power of God has visited you. You will never be the same in Jesus' name. Tonight, enrichment by grace through faith. Enrichment. All the riches of grace. All the possibilities of grace. All the power, potentials we have in the spirit. As we reach out in faith, it will be ours in Jesus' name. We're looking at Romans chapter 4. And I'm reading from verse 16, therefore. It is of faith that it might be by grace. See those two words there? Grace and faith. The free mercy of God, compassion of God, goodness of God coming upon our lives. And we reach out by faith. Grace from Him. Faith through us. Therefore, it is of faith that it might be by grace to the end for the purpose. The promise might be sure to all the seed, everyone. If you have the seed of Abraham, if you are a believer, a child of God, the promise is sure for you tonight. Not only that which is of the law, but to that also which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all, as it is written. This will be written concerning you. And everything written good concerning you will come to pass in Jesus' name. As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations. Before him whom he believed, even God, who quickness the dead, he will quicken you tonight. Brain dead, he will quicken that brain. Nerves dead, he will quicken those nerves. Muscles, joints dead, he will quicken everything dead that is dried up in your body in Jesus' name. And he called those things which be not as though they were. Those are the riches of his grace. Calling those things which be not as though they were in your life. When you're weak, he calls you strong. 
You're poor, he calls you rich. You're sorrowful, he calls you happy. You're dejected, he calls you lively. You're hopeful. Hope has come tonight. Because he called it those things in life, which be not as though they were. Who against hope? Believe in hope. There's no hopelessness in your life anymore. That he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken. So shall thy seed be. And be not weak in faith. Do you have faith here tonight? I said, Do you have faith there tonight? Be not weak in faith. He considered not his own body now dead. You see, that's a problem with people. They consider their body the way I feel, the way I sense it in my body. It appears everything is dead. It appears all the juices are dried up. It appears my memory is going and failing me. It appears my sight is going. He considered not the body that was now dead. Don't consider what you feel. A miracle will happen. Don't consider what you sense there. A miracle will happen in Jesus' name. He said, be not weak in faith. He considered not his own body now dead. When he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not, I will not stagger. He staggered not, I will not stagger. He staggered not, I will not stagger. You know, sometimes the promises of God are way up there, far away there. It appears, how will I reach them? Tonight you are reaching them. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but he was strong in faith, giving glory to God and being fully persuaded that he, but that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. God is able in your life tonight in Jesus' name. Enrichment by grace through faith. Three things. Number one, redemption. Number two, recovery. Number three, righteousness. Number one, redemption for the godly and the faithful. Total redemption comes to you tonight. Redemption from the curse of the law. Don't ever say with your mouth anymore, maybe I am under a curse. That curse is cancelled forever. Curse coming from long, long generations. That curse cancelled. Curse coming from whatever you yourself that you have done. You say, I caused this one. When I was in the world, before I knew the Lord, the smoking was too much. So, I'm not surprised the doctor is saying, look at this problem, look at this problem. This curse, I brought it on myself. It's cancelled tonight. I said it's cancelled tonight. They told me in the dream, I was careless. I wasn't watchful. They told me long ago that this will happen, this will happen. It's a curse that I carried since that time. Where are you? It is cancelled tonight. Redemption of the redemption, total redemption of the godly and the faithful. Galatians chapter 3. Galatians chapter 3. I'm reading from verse 13. As you hear the word is being fulfilled in your life. When the word comes in, it does the operation and it is done in Jesus' name. It says, Christ will redeem us from the curse. What is that what the Bible says? What does it say? It's done it already. Praise the Lord. Wake up. I said, Praise the Lord. 
You know, some people, some people, they say, I know when I fast, he will redeem me. When I pray long, he will redeem me. When I go to that place, he will redeem me. They put it in the future. If I use this formula, if I coach this formula, if I turn to this direction, if I bench in this way, if I look in this way, he will redeem me from because he's done it already. You are free in Jesus' name. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Be made a curse for us. All our curse, all the consequence of our sin, all the evil, he carried that upon himself. He has carried it away. He carried it to the grave. And when he rose up, he didn't come up anymore. All your curses are buried in the grave. All your problems, all the chains and the shackles, they are buried already in Christ, in Jesus' name. It says, because he was made a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangs on a tree. That's the blessing of Abraham. What do you have today? The blessing of Abraham. I said, what do you have today? That the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Thank God I am redeemed. I am redeemed. No curse. I said no curse. I said no curse. The curse is gone in Jesus' name. Psalm 130, 130. Psalm 130, verse 7. Let Israel hope in the Lord. For, the, for, it, for with the Lord there is mercy. And with him plenteous redemption. Not a tiny little bit of redemption. Not a little drop of, of redemption. Not a little trickle of redemption. Plenteous re uh, redemption. That redemption covers every area of your life. I look at you, I see a redeemed man. I look at you, I see a redeemed woman. Cause taken away from your life. Yoke broken away from your life totally free. All your chains and all your shackles, they're taken away in Jesus' name. I don't see a little redemption, a small redemption, an ordinary, ordinary redemption. I don't see a limited redemption. I see plenteous redemption. What do I have? What do you have? What do we have? What does your family have? Plenteous redemption. And he shall redeem Israel from some of his iniquities. He shall redeem Israel from all his iniquities. I am redeemed. If I'm talking about you there, where are you? I am redeemed. Don't put a curse upon your life anymore. Don't say, I am under a curse. No, you are not. No, you are not. Somebody told you that. And you are believing the lie of the devil. I see somebody free totally there. Totally delivered over there. Redeemed from the curse of the law. You will not die prematurely in Jesus' name. In Psalm 136, Psalm 136, I'm looking at verse 3 and verse 4. Oh, give thanks to the Lord of lords, for his mercy endureth forever. To him that alone doeth great wonders, for his mercy endureth forever. Verse 24, and he has redeemed past tense. He's done it already. He has done it already. It's just for you to get up and claim it and receive it. It is done in Jesus' name. 
any heat. The devil is putting the head of somebody there. You are redeemed from that already. That heat is gone in Jesus' name. There was something walking about in my body. They won't allow me to do this. Nobody will disturb you from tonight. You are redeemed completely in Jesus' name. He has redeemed us from our enemies. For his mercy endureth forever. All your enemies, their powers are nullified in your life in Jesus' name. Who giveth food to all flesh for his mercy endureth forever. Who gives thanks unto God, the God of heaven, for his mercy endureth forever. Number one, redemption for the godly and the faithful. Number two, recovery. What do you have tonight? I said, what do you have tonight? Recovery through his goodness and faithfulness. You see, because he is good, that's why you recover. It's not because, you know, I am good. No. His goodness brings the recovery into your life because of his goodness and because of his faithfulness. Recovery through his goodness and faithfulness. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 10. Acts chapter 10. I'm reading from verse 38. Acts chapter 10, verse 38. It says, How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about. What did he do? Doing good. Just did good to everybody. Saw the blind man receive your sight. Saw that woman that was bent down. 18 years. Woman, you are loose from your infirmity. Saw those uh, 10 lepers. Go show yourself to the priest. And as they went on their way, they were cleansed. And the centurion came and said, My servant lies at home, tormented of the devil. And he said, I will come and heal him. The man said, You know, Jim, you need to come. Speak the word only, and my servant will be healed. And the servant was healed. He saw the blind man. He said, Receive your sight. He just did good to everybody. And if you were there, that goodness will have flowed to you. You, and you are here tonight. I said you are here tonight. And Jesus is right there. The goodness of the Lord will flow to your side in Jesus' name. He went about doing good and healing how many of them? Why did he just say, uh, uh, tonight is not tonight. Step aside. Let the next person come. He healed all. Why did he just say, ah, uh, you are under a curse. I'm sorry. This one is difficult. I cannot do this one. I will not do this one. You come another time. He didn't tell anybody, no, this one, yours is not the will of God. You are suffering this for a divine secret purpose. You are the job of the 24th century. Therefore, hold on. Keep that. He never said that to anybody. He just went about doing good and healing. Tell me how many people. Tell me how many people. Am I there? Part of that all. I said, am I there? Part of that all. Are you there? It's coming to you tonight. I said it's coming to you tonight. He went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the Father. Oppressed by God. What? Oppressed of who? Do you know there are people that say, It's God that give me this sickness. All the people that Jesus healed, there was not one of them that Jesus said, My father gave you that, keep it. My father laid that upon you, keep it. The will of my father, my father has given you that terrible problem, keep it. I cannot touch it because I cannot walk against my father. All the people that were sick that Jesus healed, 
they were oppressed of the devil. And Jesus came to set them free. And tonight, if you have sickness, it is not from God, it's from the devil. I said it's not from God, it's from the devil. And the Lord will break that yoke tonight in Jesus' name. Healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. Can you see it there? It's through the goodness of God and through his faithfulness that goodness will work in your life tonight. Psalm 34. Psalm 34. God is good. I said God is good. All the time and all the time. God is good. Psalm 34. I'm reading from verse 8. Psalm 34 verse 8. O taste and see that the Lord is good. Because he's good, that's why he heals. Because he's good, that's why he delivers. Because he's good, that's why he sets the captives free. He says, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusts in him. What shall the goodness of the Lord do in your life? Look at verse 19. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. He is good, he is faithful. Your recovery is tonight. Your deliverance is tonight. Your healing is tonight. Lamentation. Lamentation. Chapter 3. Lamentation chapter 3, reading from verse 23 and then verse 25. You see the combination there. He is good, he is good, and he is faithful. It tells us in Lamentation chapter 3, verse 23, about the faithfulness of God. It says, They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. You'll find that faithfulness tonight. Every promise the Lord has made is faithful enough to, for, to fulfill and is going to fulfill it in your life. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore will I hope in him. The Lord is good unto them that wait for him, to them, to, to the soul that seeketh him. You find in verse 23, he's faithful. You find in verse 25, he is good. And because he is good and he's faithful, that is why you have hope in him. Number one, redemption for the godly and the faithful. Number two, recovery through his goodness and faithfulness. Number three now, righteousness by God. Grace through faith. He'll make you righteous. I said he'll make you righteous. And then when you stand and you pray, he will answer that prayer. Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5. I'm reading from verse 17. It says, For if by one man's offense, death rage by one, much more, they which receive, what do they receive? I said, what do they receive? Are you there? I said, what do they receive? You know, there are some people that feel, I have this little grace. They say, Pastor, you know, I can't uh, have victory. I have this little grace. Hey, you don't know what you've got. You have got abundance of grace. Wake up. Abundance of grace is yours tonight in Jesus' name. And then he says, and the gift of righteousness. He gives you that grace, number one. He gives you that righteousness as a gift. And then he says, you will reign in life by one Christ Jesus. You will reign in life in Jesus' name. Do you know you are going to reign over all your problems? 
I said, you know, you are going to reign over your challenges. You know, you're, you're not going to go under. You're going to come to the top. Because he gives you abundance of grace and he gives you the gift of righteousness. Now, what does that gift of righteousness do in your life? Proverbs chapter 28. Proverbs chapter 28, verse 1. I'm waiting for you to open that verse. Proverbs chapter 28, verse 1. We're going to read it together. You read it and now help me wake up those who are sleeping. Are you there already? I said, are you there? Verse 1 of uh, Proverbs chapter 28, 1, 2, 3, go. Can you read that again? Wonderful. I love your voice. Now for the final time. Once you go. Praise the Lord. There are people who are fleeing, who are running, when nobody is pursuing them. And if you are a child of God, the Lord has silenced Satan in your life. If you are a child of God, the Lord has tied the enemy down. They will not pursue you anymore in Jesus' name. If you are part of the Israel of God, all those Egyptians pursue you, they are ready in the bottom of the, of the Red Sea. You will not see them anymore in Jesus' name. But because you're used to running, you're used to fleeing, like the wicked, when you are in the world, they have come, they have come, you start running, you start fleeing. You are, all, you are always afraid, habitually. You didn't know that now all those enemies are silenced. You didn't know all those enemies now, they are crushed and they held, they are held in captivity. And you are still running and fleeing when nobody is pursuing you. Nobody will pursue you anymore. Because now you have abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. Now, as a righteous man, as a righteous woman, but the righteous are bold as what? As a lion. That running lion who is pretending, who is pre uh, pretending to be a lion, that's the devil, he will not terrify you anymore. Those powers of darkness, they are pretending to be strong and they are trying to fake a kind of roar to make you afraid. You are not afraid anymore. You have redemption. You have recovery. You have total restoration. And you have righteousness. You will stand up in the strength of the Lord. You will talk to that thing. Don't turn again. Don't turn again. Turn around and talk to that mountain and be bold as a righteous man, like a lion. All those mountains, they are crushed and removed tonight in Jesus' name. Are you there? Are you ready? Or are you still weak? Are you the weak and running away when there's nobody pursuing you? Any righteous man there? Any righteous woman there? Uh -uh. Then stand up and be bold like a lion and tell all those things to go. And they're going tonight in Jesus' name. Open your mouth and tell the Lord, redemption, I am redeemed. I am redeemed. Recovery, I recover. And then righteousness, I am righteous. The blessing is there. The blessing is there. You will not miss it tonight. Enrichment by grace through faith. The faith of the righteous. The faith of the redeemed. The faith of the restored. I have it. I have it. The blessing is mine. The blessing is yours. The wicked flees when no man is pursuing. But the righteous, you turn around. And then you command that sin with the authority of a lion and say, get out of my life. It is gone in Jesus' name. 
You have the gift of righteousness with the abundance of grace. And then knowing that you are righteous in Christ, you will stand firm. No animal intimidates a lion. No beast in the field intimidates a lion. And the righteous is as bold as a lion. In Jesus' name we pray. I am redeemed from the curse of the law. I am redeemed from the consequences of sin. I am redeemed from the power of Satan. My sicknesses are healed. The Lord is good in my life. Christ has come to me. He comes to heal me of all sicknesses because I belong to him. Jesus has made me righteous. I have abundance of grace. I have the gift of righteousness. I am as bold as a lion. I am as bold as a lion. I will not fear. I will not be intimidated. I will not be pushed away. I will not be denied. I am a child of God. I have the blessing of God. His blessing will overflow in my life. And everybody said, Rest up those hands. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for every brother and every sister, every boy and every girl, total redemption from everything that is called cause. Do it in Jesus' name. Every yoke is broken away from your life. Every cause is removed from your life. You are free. You are free. Lord, I pray every form of affliction, Every form of sickness, I pray, take it away from every life in Jesus' name. Your word declares many are the afflictions of the righteous. But the Lord delivers the righteous from them all. Lord, I pray, total recovery, total restoration. Grant to all your people in Jesus' name. Make your people righteousness conscious. Make your people boldness conscious. Make your people authority conscious. And I pray, Lord, like the righteous people you have made them, they will speak against every mountain. They will speak with the authority and the boldness of a lion. And no evil thing will have authority over your life anymore in Jesus' name. The Lord set you free. You're free from sin. You're free from sickness. You're free from evil spirits. You're free from satanic affliction. In the day, you're free. In your dreams, you're free. At home, you're free. In the office, you're free. Every tongue that rises up in judgment against you, you will condemn in Jesus' name. Your past is redeemed. Your present is renewed. Your future is revealed. The Lord be with you. The power of the Lord be with you. Total freedom, fruitfulness, power, redemption, healing, and total recovery in your life. Once again, as you go into the new year, there will be no lack in your life. In this coming new year, there will be no loss in your family. 
this coming year, there will be no limitation in the work of God in Jesus' name. Be filled with all the goodness of God. May the blessing of God overflow in your life. Confirm it, O oh Lord, for every life. In Jesus' name we pray.